Yo, what's up, guys? We're back. We're doing another Dana White Center Series uh, full betting perspective. This is week five. We've done very well. You know, we've won four out of five so far. Last week we did very well and uh, hoping to do that again here. But obviously, as always, this couldn't be possible without odds.com, odds HQ. So make sure to be uh, checking out the website, odds.com. They got a lot of articles, uh, NBA playoffs in full swing and NHL playoffs. We obviously got some UFC content over there as well. So it's all good, and there's a lot of um, you know interesting things you could look at over there. But when you when we get into this UFC card or this Dane Walker Tennis Series card, which is what everyone wants to do, the first fight of the night here is Tucker Lutz taking on Chase Gibson, and um, you know it's a decent fight. It's a short notice fight for Chase Gibson. It was originally supposed to be Victor Martinez uh, taking this fight, but I, I'm not 100% sure why Martinez pulled out. But Chase Gibson is getting the replacement fight here, and when you look at the records, Lutz he's nine and one. He's coming out of Maryland, and he doesn't really have a great resume, but Chase Gibson, he's coming out of California 9-4, and four, and his resume is horrible. I mean, he's 3-2 and two in his last five, and the three opponents he defeated in those five fights were 0-2, oh 0-1, and, oh and, and, oh and 19 So that's not something that I like to see. He ha- Gibson has fought in some bigger promotions. Um, Let's has only fought in Maryland. Gibson, he's uh, fought in Combate. He's fought on uh, King of the Cage. But he's a natural featherweight. He's going to be the smaller guy, and I just was not impressed with what I saw from him. He looks like he has a good straight and overhand right, and he'll shoot it fast down the middle. But he throws a lot of naked kicks. He throws a lot of kicks way too close. He just doesn't seem to uh, have a good idea of how to control range or use the range or use his strikes at the right time. He um, has very bad takedown defense. I've seen him you know, get taken down controlled. And uh, just doesn't look very good overall. I mean, uh, doesn't have any get-ups. The thing that I think is probably the best part of his game is if he can get on top, but his wrestling isn't there. I mean, I've seen him hit a couple of double legs against low-level guys, but Lutz, I don't see him getting takedowns on Tucker Lutz. Um, you know, when he gets on top, I mean, he does have some decent top control, rear naked chokes, but, uh, you know, he's finished seven of his nine wins. He's he uh, is only two and three in decisions. And he definitely slows down after the first round. I just don't rate him at all that as that good of a fighter. Um, Tucker Lutz, to me, is a way better fighter. He's a boxer wrestler. He's a better athlete. Good forward pressure. Good double legs against the fence. Real heavy ground and pound. Uh, he does kind of make mistakes, though, in the jiu-jitsu realm. I mean, I've noticed he kind of uh, you know, leaves his arms out there to be uh, armbarred and can kind of uh, you know, put his head in bad positions to get um, choked. But... I haven't been able to find very many recent fights of Tucker Lutz. They're all kind of old. So I do obviously believe that he's got gotten a lot better throughout the years here. I think I saw fights like four years ago, three, four years ago. And when I was looking at the footage on that, even those fights, I feel like that guy should be able to comfortably beat someone like Chase Gibson. So with that being said, and with the probable improvements that Tucker Lutz has made, I just believe that he's, he's the significantly better fighter here than Chase Gibson. And looking at the line, I mean, he opened up minus 185 or, or so. Now he's at minus 205. I mean, I think that he has a lot of value there. I don't, I mean, uh, I think he could be as high as minus uh, 300. I know it's hard to kind of uh, put those guys at that position, but I just kind of feel like Chase Gibson, I, I just don't think he's a, a great fighter. I don't uh, think he's uh, even contender series level. So Tucker Lutz should roll here, in my opinion. Um, he looked pretty big at the weigh-ins in my opinion. He looked a little bit bigger than Gibson as well, but Gibson was in his face. They both looked confident. I just got Tucker Lutz here and he actually is going to be one part of my parlay of the week. And he's also the most confident pick on the card for me. So I just feel like Tucker Lutz should definitely run away with this one. And then in the next fight, this is actually a good fight. It's a uh, light heavyweight bout. It's between uh, Cody Brundage and William Knight. And uh, William Knight did miss weight for this fight. So uh, that's something that you have to look at, but the thing about it is, I mean, uh, I, I think that could almost help William Knight in this type of matchup because William Knight is coming back on the contender series, seven and one, seven finishes, and he's just an athletic freak. He's a guy that's uh, maybe not the most skilled, but has big power on the feet. When he gets on top of you, he pounds you out, finishes you, and uh, he has freaky good cardio for a guy his size. He doesn't get tired. He'll get beat up on and get late victories. You could tell he's green, like. Man, in a lot of his fights, he'll get hurt, he'll get taken down, put in real bad positions, but he has a lot of heart, man, and he'll survive, and when he gets his opportunity to get on top or his opportunity to land a big shot, he closes the show on you, so um, 
you know, he's someone that's fun to watch, but at 32 years old, I'm not a hundred percent sure how much growth he's going to have. But I do think that when you're looking at him fighting a guy like Cody Brundage, five and oh, um, he hasn't really fought anyone of no, and he's only fought at light heavyweight one time in his career, fought a lot of catch weight bouts, you know, at 198, 195, 190, very odd fights and small promotions against bad fighters. William Knight, he's been in CES, he's been in CFFC, he's been in Dana White Contender Series, so definitely has been in the better promotions. I believe he's fought the much higher level of competition as well. If you look at his uh, um, amateur record, he's beaten Jorgen DeCastro, he's beaten Matthew Semmelsberger, who are both in the UFC. And um, I mean, Knight to me in this fight, it's two grapplers, but Knight on the feet, I think, is uh, a little bit better, even though Brundage has the height and reach advantage and they're both very hittable and they're both big guys. So anything could happen. Brundage maybe is a little bit smoother with the technique with the one twos, but um, you know, he's not very athletic and he floats his chin. And I feel like William Knight is a guy that's uh, you know, going to be able to close that distance, potentially land on his chin, even though he's not the, as good on the feet. So I think that Knight's actually going to be the better striker here. Or just the, the um, more dangerous striker and the more, you know, the better striker for this matchup, even if he's not as technical. And I believe on the mat, Brundage, I think the size is going to be a big factor. And I've seen William Knight against guys like uh, Herman Alchemic, that guy that he fought on Dana White Tennis Series, get put in real bad position, survive. Even after that fight, Jamel Jones, who's a big guy, fought on Dana White Tennis Series as well, good wrestler. And I feel like Brundage, um, even if he has some moments, gets on top of him early, gets in a dominant position, Knight has that type of like that Derek Lewis just uh, like get up defense on the ground. You just stand up out of bad positions, just get his way out. Um, and I just feel like he's a little too big, a little too athletic, and he's going to be able to maybe uh, wear Cody down after Cody has a little bit of success, put him in a bad spot and finish him off. So I'm going with William Knight here, and I think he's a slight underdog. And looking at the line, um, or it's minus 110, minus 120 now, so – um, you know, he still is a slight underdog, but it is minus money. And uh, looking at that fight doesn't go to decision, minus 305. I want to wait for them to drop the under one and a half because I feel like um, potentially that could go under one and a half, even though I feel like William Knight is a slow starter, so it could go over as well. So that one, maybe now that I'm thinking about it, maybe stay away from her, but I don't think that's going to go to decision. Minus 305, that's kind of uh, a wide number, but I, I think it's parlayable because I'd be very surprised if that fight went all three rounds. So you know, I do feel like um, William Knight's going to get the win, but with him missing weight, who knows what that means. For the Dana White Contender Series, that's not the greatest sign because obviously, you know, this is like an interview, so you don't want to miss weight. That's a bad, uh, you know, first impression. So I don't know if he had an injury in camp. I don't know what happened, if this was very short notice for him. So I would just stay away from the fight betting-wise, but I do think William Knight is going to get the win at the line, very close line. I mean – uh like I said, I would just stay away from that fight completely, but the over and the under, I do believe that it's probably not going to go to decision there. And then uh, upcoming next, this is going to be the second half of my parlay of the week, so this is going to close out the two-fight parlay that I am going to give you. It's going to be um, a Bantamweight fight, which is Jose Johnson taking on Ronnie Lawrence. And um, it's actually going to be Jose Johnson that's going to be in the second half of the parlay. Johnson, he's 25 years old. He's 11-5. and five as a pro, but he's 68 and 12 as an amateur. That's a lot of amateur experience. I've never really seen someone with that much amateur ex experience. You know, he's one of the most experienced guys that I've seen come through the contender series. And um, he's going to be the much bigger guy, much bigger than a lot of his opponents. He faces at Bantamweight. He's six feet tall. He's one of the biggest Bantamweights I've ever seen. I mean, just the size as well. And uh, extremely athletic, a physical freak, very loose, great movement. He switches stances. He walks guys down, but he stays at his own range. He makes that cage very small. And, um, you know, he has, um, you know, a very good ability to just, like, catch you with these nasty straight punches right at the end of his reach. Really nice kicks, fast round kicks, front kicks to the body, to the head. And um, he cuts angles well. He has huge power. I mean, you could see these 135ers don't like getting hit by Johnson. They try to close the distance immediately. And um, the issue with him throughout his career has been his grappling. You know, guys have been able to get him against the fence, take him down, control him. But he's gotten better with that, and he's gotten better at uh, 
defensive wrestling. He has good height, instincts, and athleticism, which help him in scrambles. He can, um, you know, use his uh, length to to sweep, get back to his feet, get on top. He has very good cardio, so he could scramble all day. And in the clinch on the feet, man, he's a real big issue, man. He has nasty knees, real nasty elbows, some of the best elbows I've seen, man. If you haven't seen his uh, last elbow knockout in LFA, check that out. It's one of the nastiest knockouts of the year. He has, um, you know, these cutting elbows, slicing elbows that he'll enter range with inside that just slice you open. I mean, I've seen him cut guys open, and they've just, like, quit immediately. Um, you know, he's very good, man. I mean, he does give his back at times to stand up and – if this Ronnie Lawrence really has gotten a lot better with this wrestling, it's a heavy grappling game plan. He could potentially give him issues, but, uh, you know, he's definitely improved as a fighter, Johnson, and I do rate him. I think he's a good prospect for sure. But Lawrence, fun style to watch, stands tall, kind of a kicker, darts in and out, but he does have a good straight uh, right hand to the body, to the head, a uh, good uppercut. His um, boxing inside isn't the best, and I think inside Johnson will eat him up with the knees, with the elbows, with the – just with, I think he has better boxing as well. But um, Lawrence has real nice low kicks, real nice front round kicks to the body. He throws, um, you know, spinning kicks real well, no telegraph. He'll end combinations with kicks. He isn't really the best boxer, like I said, though. And, and him standing tall does leave his chin out there to be hit. It does leave his body kind of there to be ate up a little bit. But uh, he's a fun fighter to watch. You know, he'll uh, hit these nice foot sweeps in the clinch. He has some nice knees, elbows in there himself. Both these guys are good strikers, but, um, I mean, I definitely think Lawrence will try to wrestle. I did see him time some good double legs in his last fight, even though he doesn't look like a grappler. They look decent, and uh, I think that's what he's going to try to do here. I don't think he wants to try to get takedowns in the clinch. That could be a bad recipe for him to get beat up there. On the feet, I just think Johnson is more dynamic. He's bigger. He's faster. Hits harder. And I just don't see Lawrence knocking him out. I've seen Johnson go up to 155, take big shots from a 55-er, get dropped, stand right back up, and get right back in his face. Um, I just see Johnson as a superior fighter, athlete, the bigger guy. I think he should get the finish here. Both guys are solid, but I'm comfortable in my pick with jo uh, Jose Johnson. I think he should get it done. And um, so, yeah, I'm going with Jose Johnson here. That is going to close out the parlay. Um, looking at his odds, he's at uh, a minus 225 right now. And um, for the fight doesn't go to distance, minus 175. Um, I would just stay away from that. Just do the parlay with those two so you don't have to worry about that. But I do think Johnson will get the finish here. I think he's going to be able to get him uh, get it done inside the distance. His last five fights, he's won all in the first round. Dynamic finisher. So uh, I'm going with Johnson here. I think he's going to get it done, and he's going to close out the parlay for us. And um, up next, we got Jimmy Flick. And Nate Smith, this is a grapplers fight. This is a real good matchup. I really like this fight. Nate Smith was originally supposed to fight uh, JP Bays, who is uh, um, what was her name? Uh, well, uh, the girl last week, she Cheyenne, Cheyenne Bays. Uh, it's his, it's her husband. So he was supposed to fight Nate Smith here, but Jimmy Flick, he's getting the short notice uh, jump in. And uh, Flick is the veteran in this matchup, man. He's four years older, fourteen and five, but he's still only twenty nine. He's not too old. Nate Smith, he's 6-0, he's a 25-year-old kid, and he does have 20 amateur fights, Nate Smith, so he has a lot of experience himself, but uh, Jimmy Flick definitely tested himself against a lot better competition. He's fought and defeated some UFC veterans. He got the LFA bell a couple months ago. Um, in that fight, he was actually able to submit a 10-1 guy in the first round, and after the fight, he was going crazy, man. I mean, there was no fans. You could hear him perfectly, and he was screaming like 10 years, Dana White gave me my chance, so... He's going to have a lot of motivation coming in here. He wants to get it done, wants to get in the UFC. And he, he's a grappler, man. On the feet, he isn't the best. He is tough. He's willing to throw down, throws kicks, uh, decent jab. And uh, he'll throw some hard uh, you know, body kicks and head kicks. But, uh, you know, his defense isn't good. He'll shell up, stand in place. He's been knocked out in four of his five losses. In this fight, though, I kind of do feel like um, – he might be the better striker than Nate Smith. Nate Smith is a very young green guy in the feet. He's a grappler himself, but uh, Jimmy Flick is a brown belt in jiu-jitsu, good takedowns, and uh, real good takedowns in the clinch. He's super aggressive on top, real heavy top pressure, real nice arm triangles, good back takes. And In his last fight, he finished with the arm triangle very quickly, and he has 12 submissions in his 19 wins or 19 fights, and uh, there's only been a decision three times so he's a finisher killer be kill type of guy 
Nate Smith, 6-0. He hasn't really faced very good competition. He did beat Jeff Molina, but Molina at the time was only 1-1. One and one. Obviously, we just saw Molina on the Contender Series last week. The other guy that he beat that was decent was a 14-7 and seven opponent, but he was an old guy for flyweight. Didn't look very good on uh, when I watched his fight. But Nate Smith, he's a great athlete. He's a strong wrestler. He is the better athlete here, but the striking you know, isn't great for him either. Like I said, he has a wide stance. His punches are wild, but uh, he is going to be faster, and I think he has more just raw power and athleticism, explosiveness. Um, you know, he does throw some decent kicks and uh, hard elbows, knees inside. I feel like in the clinch, he's going to be the most dangerous with the strikes for Flick. But he's a great wrestler as well. He's more of a Greco-Roman guy, so he has real good clinch takedowns, good body locks. And on top, he's very good. He floats, passes well, uses ground and pound to set up uh, submission opportunities. Real good at wrist riding, just riding guys out. Um, the fight is two low-level low guys on the feet. I think Smith is uh, a little more dangerous on the feet, like I said, but it'll probably play it on the ground. And um, Nate Smith did get taken down a few times in his last fight. He kept jumping guillotine instead of defending the takedown. Gave his back a couple times, and that was against a guy that was only 2-0. and But um, Smith is great in the scrambles. He trains at elevation, and he was able to scramble with that guy until he got him tired, took his back, finished him. But in this fight, I, I just trust the jiu-jitsu savviness, the experience of Jimmy Flick a little more than Nate Smith. Smith is the superior athlete. He's probably the superior wrestler. He could potentially get a knockout with the elbow, like I said, or uh, you know, get take the back, finish him. He's super strong there. But uh, Smith has been submitted seven times as an amateur. Flick never been submitted. I just uh, didn't take the chance that it's a grappling fight. Flick catches him. And um, looking at the line, um, Flick is plus 130 underdog here. Nate Smith coming in at minus 160. Um, so, you know, I do believe there's a little bit of value on Nate Smith there if you want to take the chance – or on uh, – Jimmy Flick, excuse me, if you want to take the chance on him. Me personally, I'm not sure. I'm probably just going to pass unless the line gets to about plus 150. Then potentially I'll take a stab at it. But uh, I do think that's a dog or pass line. I do think Jimmy Flick, he's the older guy here. He has a lot of motivation to go in there get the win. If Nate Smith loses, you know, he could be back and come back again. So uh, I think Flick is going to be able to get it done here. But uh, I'm going to pass on that, like I said, unless it gets to around a minus 150 or a plus 150. And then up next year, we got the main event. We got Melzik Bagdazarian taking on um, taking on Dennis Bazooka. And, man, I mean, um, this fight, I'm not going to talk a lot about it because I was able to find a couple of Dennis's fights, and I only found one Melzik fight in MMA. And all his MMA fights, man, I mean, he's finishing like 9 seconds, 14 seconds, 30 seconds. So he's not you know, taking a lot of cage time. And his one loss, he was submitted, so... I obviously, you know, Melsic, he's a straight-up kickboxer, Muay Thai guy. More Muay Thai style, but he was fighting kickbox, a lot of kickboxing fights. Um, you know, flat-footed, good low kicks, good counters, but uh, not a lot of head movement. He is a pretty athletic guy, real nice kicks. And, uh, I mean, if they just straight trade and they're standing in the pocket, very tough. I feel like he'll probably be able to beat Dennis in that in that type of game. But, um, you know, Dennis, he's kind of a striker as well. I watched a couple of his fights. Wasn't really able to find him wrestling much. He is coming out of Longo Wyman MMA, which that team's been on a tear this year, man. I don't know if they've even had any losses. And they have a lot of grapplers around Dennis's weight class. So, obviously, the smart thing for Dennis to do is to mix it up. And if he can implement some grappling or just shooting at the legs, getting in the clinch, even if he can't get the takedowns, it'll probably help him even out in the striking realm. I do feel like Dennis is a good striker as well. He fought a guy, Tim Dooling, that pushed Bill Algio, who Algio we just saw last week fight in the UFC. And, um, you know, he was able to break Algio, or break Dooling down, um, you know, landed some body shots, walked him down, controlled the distance, and outstruck him to a decision. So Dennis, he has definitely been fighting the better competition. He's gone rounds. He's been in the cage. He's obviously training at a better camp, I believe. I mean, Melzik is training at Glendale. He's training with, you know, Leon Chabazian, Edmund Chabazian, and all those other, you know, Armenian guys in California. But uh, I feel like Longo Weidman's on a real tear. Aljo, Marab are all around his weight class. I'm going to go with Dennis uh, Dennis here to get the victory. Um, I'm going to say he mixes it up, you know, gets takedowns and maybe gets a submission here. But 
not super confident because, like I said, I haven't seen Dennis grapple much. Melzik, very, very limited cage time in MMA. So who knows? I mean, Melzik might get out here and knock him out again. It could be a striking fight. or um, It's hard to say with this one. That's why me personally, I'm just completely staying away from this fight um, and that uh, William Knight, Cody Brennan fight. These are the two fights I just don't really have – much interest at all in these fights in terms of betting. The line is pretty even, minus 120 for Dennis, minus 110 for Melzik. So if you have a better read on that one than me, then that one's going to be up to you. But the play that I'm going to give you here for this week, um, like I said, is going to be Jose Johnson and Tucker Lutz as the parlay of the week here for the Dana White Tenor Series. So good luck to everyone. Good luck to me as well because I'm already going to be playing it. And – um we're going to be live tomorrow for the Dana White Tennis Series, so make sure to come check us out on that. And thanks for always supporting Odds HQ. Thanks for always supporting my channel, MMA Prediction Guru. And uh, I'm out, guys. Let's have fun watching these fights tomorrow.